Hello guys, today we'll be covering a 2004 psychological horror film called House of Nine. All the relevant links and information for the film will be in the description down below. Now, let's get right into the movie. The movie starts off with people getting abducted randomly from different places in different ways. Some from their own car, some on their way home, and others during their duty. A girl wakes up in a room and there's a stranger lying on the next bed. As she's scanning the room, she slowly walks and opens the door where she finds herself in a passageway of a grand house. Hello, she shouts to check if anyone is present there. She then starts looking around and finds two men lying unconscious in the adjacent room. Utterly confused by the whole situation, she runs to the main door and tries to open it. Unable to open the door, she goes to check the windows only to find out that all the windows have been blocked with walls of bricks. She even goes to the basement in search of any way out of the house, but she's met with disappointment as every single escape route has been blocked, confining her in that house. Unable to process this mess, she has a panic attack as she collapses in the passage. A while later, she wakes up to the sound of a man waking her up. Regaining her composure, she looks around and sees more people. To be exact, nine people are in that house, including herself. The girl's name is Leah, she's a dancer, and the man who just woke her up is Father Duffy. Jay is a cop, Max is a clothes designer, Al B is an aspiring black rap artist who assumes anything said to him is racially motivated, Claire's a tennis star, Francis is a music composer, and Cynthia is his spouse, and Shona is a drug addict, and the one with an ankle tracker. Soon they're greeted by a mysterious voice coming out of the speaker. The voice tells them that they were not chosen for who they are, but more for what they are. The voice also informs them that they've been brought together to play a game that will be the ultimate test of their human character. This game is purely for the entertainment of the watcher, the one who's watching and listening to them through 75 cameras and countless microphones fitted all over the house. He then reveals that the winner of this game will be the last one to stay alive. The winner will not only be freed, but will also be able to walk away with $5 million for their contribution to the game. After the voice vanishes, these nine players are in a state of chaos. Some people believe the game to be real while others don't, but still, they're all bothered by the unclear statement that said, only one will live. Amidst the argument back and forth, Jay pulls a gun out of his pocket and puts it in front of everyone and says that the situation is serious as the kidnappers have left him with a gun. Everyone else is terrified by the sight of the gun. He asks others to calm down and reveals himself as a cop. The rest of them think that this is unfair for him to have a gun, while they are all on the edge for their survival. Albie's wrath towards white cops makes him direct his anger toward Jay, because in the past, his little brother had to suffer at the hands of such white cops. Just then, Francis comes to the conclusion that the Watcher wants them to kill each other. Everyone freaks out while Jay agrees with Francis, and further adds that once everything is over, the one surviving will also most likely be killed. Next, Jay suggests that they need to work together to find a way out. He proposes the idea of ramming the doors with a heavy dining table. Everyone works together except Claire, who's sitting on the couch, smoking and watching them keenly. Despite everyone's hard work, the door does not budge an inch. Jay tries firing on the wall, but nothing works. Therefore, they decide to inspect every nook and cranny for any cracks, openings, or hidden exits. Once again, their attempts prove to be futile. Meanwhile, Claire gets her hands on the liquor cabinet and downs the liquor. Next, they sit down to have a little discussion. They're debating over the power of money and what it can do in desperate situations. Just then, they hear a sound coming from the kitchen. They go to look for the source of the sound and find a dumb waiter with the food. Their dinner consists of a piece of chicken and one potato each. In the dining room, while having dinner, they introduce themselves. After dinner, they divide the rooms to share. There are five rooms with two single beds in each room. Since the priest and the spouses are having individual rooms for themselves, the remaining six people choose their room partners by picking names. Jay and Leah, Claire and Shona, and Max and Al B are paired up. They then go to their assigned rooms to rest for the night. Later inside one of the rooms, Claire is furious with Shona for going through her things. And in the other rooms, Leah and Jay are talking about their lives. The night did not pass in peace as they expected it to. In the dead of the night, someone attacks Jay and gets hold of his gun. Since it's dark, Leah and Jay are not able to recognize the intruder. But the commotion causes the people to come out of their rooms. Afterward, they argue and point their finger at one another, causing everyone to doubt everyone. The next morning, they hear noises outside the house. When Jay tells them that police have arrived by tracking Shona's tracker, they rush to the front door and start shouting and banging at the door hysterically. To attract their attention, Jay even fires the gun, but it's to no avail. While each of them is desperate to escape from that place and trying their best, only one person in the house is observing all the turmoil with composure. 
and that person is Francis. With this turn of events, they all lose their last ray of hope. Jay then gives them the key to the liquor cabinet. Except for Jay and the father, other people drown themselves in liquor as the two head to their respective rooms, while the remaining people drink, smoke, and play light music to relieve stress from their helpless situation. Since the music in the mood is already depressing, Al B changes the music to an upbeat one to lighten up the environment. They start grooving to the music. Meanwhile, Francis sneaks to his room with a bottle of liquor, and there, muffling the sound with the blanket, he breaks the bottle and makes a sharp weapon out of it. He then secretly hides the weapon above the door frame of the bathroom. On the other hand, all the other people are totally wasted from the alcohol, leaving only Cynthia and Al B in the living room, dancing to the music. All of a sudden, Francis comes and attacks Al B for flirting with his wife, which results in a brawl. And while Cynthia is trying to intervene, Al B pushes her, which causes her to hit her head against the railing. Immediately after, blood begins oozing out from her head and she dies on the spot. After that, Jay locks Al B in his room and they dispose of the dead body in the basement. In the evening, they're provided with a reduced portion of the ration, which consists of just potatoes. Jay gives Al B a potato and his share of dinner, but the priest goes to give more food to Al B. Just when he opens the door, Al B comes rushing out, grabs the metal rod, and hits Jay mercilessly with it, completely battering his face. While Jay is breathing his last breath, he hands over his gun to the priest. They then put his body in the basement alongside Cynthia's. During the next dinner, they're rewarded with extra food and wine, with a good work note as an appreciation for putting up a good show. They divide the food and wine amongst themselves. Then Francis grabs Al B's portion of food as well and tells others that he's going to deliver the food to Al B. Except for the priest and Leah, they no longer have dinner together in the dining room. They all gobble down their food separately. After dinner, Leah and the priest go to check on Al B, only to find him hanging in his room. Since Francis was the last one to meet Al B with the excuse of delivering his food, he becomes the main suspect. Later that day, the priest goes to talk with Max. He tells him that apart from Leah, he cannot trust any of them, so he's come to join hands to survive the situation. At that moment, Max is overcome with greed and asks for more portions of food. But the priest disagrees with them as it won't be fair to other people. Max doesn't comply and tries to grab quite a large portion when the priest takes the gun out and warns him not to take anything more than his share. In another room, Claire is fed up with Shona touching her things once again. They then get involved in an argument, leading them to slap each other. Things escalate rather quickly when Claire stabs Shona at the side of her neck, ultimately killing her. Processing the incident, Claire is shocked by her own action. Meanwhile, when Leah is washing her face in the bathroom, Francis comes to visit her. Without much ado, he rips the light fixture from the wall and dunks it in the sink full of water that leads to electrocuting her. She then collapses to the ground. While the priest is taking Claire to lock her up, they see Leah on the bathroom floor. Claire uses this opportunity to trick and escape from him. The priest sits beside Leah thinking that she's dead. A while later, Francis comes pretending to be shocked at the sight of Leah, but the priest sees through him and points the gun at him but can't bring himself to shoot him. Then Francis starts provoking him to shoot him, knowing he can't, and asks him to hand over the gun. Left with no other option, the priest shoots at Francis, but the injury is not fatal enough to kill him. Next, Leah survives the electrocution as she hears a gunshot. Immediately, she rushes to the nearby room and enters the bathroom. There, she accidentally slips and knocks over the toilet lid, discovering the shards of glass that Francis had previously hidden. Escaping from the priest, Claire goes to the kitchen and finds food lying in the open. She starts eating the food but is startled by Max hiding behind the kitchen counter. Thinking of survival, she asks him to work together with her. Conversely, he has some other thoughts. He pulls off his belt and strangles Claire to kill her. The priest arrives at the same moment, but Max lies, saying that Claire is stealing the food. He then tells Max to let her go and points the gun at him. Seeing that he has no intention of sparing her life, he unwillingly shoots at him. Just then, Francis comes and stabs the priest from behind. Then he takes the gun and fires at Claire, making the injured priest his next target. The priest begs to let him live, but he eventually is killed at the hand of Francis. Now, Francis is overjoyed thinking that he's the only one alive, so he's the winner of the game. He shouts at the watcher, asking for the reward money. Just then, he hears the noise of something breaking upstairs. Pressing on his wound, he rushes upstairs and discovers Leah there. After seeing Francis, she runs for her life and hides underneath a bed, but eventually he finds her. While he's pulling her out, she stabs his leg with a piece of glass shard and runs. Unfortunately, he's hell-bent on catching her. Ultimately, Leah is cornered on the balcony. Francis charges towards her, and they both topple over the railing and fall down. On landing, Leah is on top of him, and she realizes that the glass shard is planted in his chest. After Francis has died, 
the front door opens with blinding light. Leah gets down from the table and walks toward the open door leading to a huge bag. Once she enters the room, the door shuts closed behind her. She then carries the bag and walks out through the open door at the front. The sight that greets her is four shivering people, each hugging a bag of money. She's once again led to a similar looking house where she finally realizes that the game is yet to be over. The End